In today's video, I'll be making gold pennies. Now, these pennies aren't actually gold, and this isn't some new alchemist trick either. This process highlights a copper alloy known as brass. Brass is a super interesting metal because it's one of the alloys that has possibly been around since prehistory. They have even found traces of brass within Mesopotamia. There are many different types of brass, but what is going to be made today is just a simple brass coating onto a penny, some copper pieces, and even a completely copper coin. The process to do this is simple, and we're going to coat the copper in zinc, then melt the zinc and copper layer together to make brass. So let's get started. The chemicals I will be using are 30% vinegar, also known as acetic acid, zinc chloride, and some copper and zinc pieces. However, if you don't have zinc chloride laying around, you can swap it out with something like sodium hydroxide and use more zinc. Though, since I do have zinc chloride, I'll choose to do it this way. However, I will go over the process of both in this video. First, we need to clean our pennies of oils and copper oxides that are present. Because pennies are usually really dirty, and the dirt or oil could cause complications later on. To do this, we add 15 milliliters of 30% vinegar to a beaker, followed by adding just around 100 milliliters of distilled water. I forgot to film it, but you also add in 3 grams of kitchen salt. From here, we just need to add our pennies in for a few minutes. I slowly rotate out 12 pennies for this project, and I keep each penny in the bath for about 4-5 to five minutes. After pulling each one out, I rinse it with water, followed by wiping each one with a cotton swab to really remove the oils. Ideally, this project is done with new pennies, because naturally they will have less oxidation. As the penny sits, the acetic acid slowly reacts with the copper 2 oxide layer on the penny to create a copper acetate which is soluble in the solution, and some of it will be brought off. After this, the cotton swab removed the rest of the copper 2 oxide layer and copper acetate. I also decided to leave one penny in solution for a few days, and I will show that later on as well. Theoretically though, the acetic acid should react with the penny to form a copper 2 acetate and a zinc acetate. What I think is really cool is while removing the layers of oxide, we can see blue stains on my paper towel, and this is most likely a copper 2 acetate but it's definitely a copper to salt. Now that our coins are clean, we can get on to making our pennies. I need to make a one molar solution of zinc chloride, and to do this, I add 125 milliliters of water with 17 grams of zinc chloride powder. Following the addition, I clean the weighing tray with a little bit of water and add that in too. Then I add in some pieces of zinc oxide and I use about 10 grams in total. This will be more than enough for all my pennies. When we get everything into the solution, it will be cloudy. Zinc chloride is soluble in water, however to get everything to dissolve, we need to heat the solution, which will increase the solubility of the zinc chloride. I pour everything into a larger beaker, turn on my hot plate, and add in a thermometer. In about 10 minutes, everything cleared up and we are ready to add the pennies. The trick here is to have all the pennies touching the zinc pieces, but not have the pennies touching each other. Over the next 10 minutes, each penny will gain a zinc coating which we can see when the penny starts turning silver. After a while, it is highly recommended to flip each coin over to make sure both sides are being coated. When we take the coin out of solution, we can see that it still has some areas to be coated, and it turns out the less you move these pennies during, the better but I was really impatient, so I ended up moving them a lot. What is actually happening here is the zinc and copper are starting to trade electrons with each other and they are chemically bonding under these conditions. When I take each penny out for the final time, I dunk it in distilled water to cool it down and remove any excess particles. Following this, I place them on a paper towel and allow them to dry. Unfortunately, I made some pretty basic mistakes that gave them a less than shiny hue. I decided to turn them brass anyways because it's still pretty cool. When I heat this penny up, the zinc and copper will melt down together, and this action takes place within seconds. Brass is extremely easy to make because of the low entropy of the mixture of copper and zinc. 
When creating alloys, there are a lot of ideas that come into play, including thermodynamics. Though, without getting too much into it, copper and zinc are very similar in atomic size, so they bond together really easily. The atomic size of each element comes into place when mixing alloys. As I said before, I made some pretty basic mistakes. So I decided to do everything one more time, however this time I will not use older zinc oxide pieces, and instead I will use zinc from the inside of a penny. This zinc has been safely protected by a copper layer, and it is far shinier and overall a better quality. To get the zinc inside of a penny, all we have to do is melt it. Zinc melts at a relatively low temperature, so I just decide to use my propane torch and blast the penny until the zinc drips out. I am letting it land on one of the bases on my ring clamps, however I could have just easily used a beaker. From here, I take my zinc chloride solution that I used last time, and added additional water, because some has evaporated in the last few days since the first run. After this, I place it on a hot plate, and add my flask on top to limit heat loss. As it heats up, I take the flask off and manually stir it around to make sure the zinc chloride is going into solution. This will make the solution cloudy again, and this is fine because we are going to filter everything off once the solution is boiling. I do a hot gravity filtration with two coffee filters and a funnel. However, I could have used more coffee filters because the zinc chloride is really fine and some of it still manages to get through. After the filtering step, I place my beaker back on the hot plate and make sure it is all simmering before adding my pennies and my new source of zinc. After about 20 minutes, I take my pennies out and I can see they are much shinier than before. This is a great sign, however to do my pure copper coin, I will need to get more zinc pieces in the solution. I decided to clean some zinc of oxidation layer by adding it into acetic acid, followed by a water bath. This cleans up all the zinc and it can be used in this project. Once I add my now clean zinc, I am ready to continue. My pure copper coin is a momentum for when I saw the Statue of Liberty this last year with my girlfriend. This coin is 99% copper and it is the same thickness as the actual Statue of Liberty copper metal outer layer. I slowly drop in the coin and hope for the best. After about 5 minutes, I flip the coin over and I can see a nice layer of zinc on the coin. After about 10 minutes, I take it out of the solution and it has a really nice shiny zinc layer. When I compare these coins to previous ones, I can instantly see the difference in quality and overall hue. And now for the fun part. I will melt the zinc back into the penny to create a nice brass layer. After heating, I dip each penny in clean distilled water and it really starts to shine. Watching this action in slow motion is a really cool thing because we can see the penny change to brass almost in an instant, even at 50% speed. Finally, for the big coin. And we pretty much get the same results as the pennies. Something interesting to note though is there is a bunch of different types of brass, and it all depends on the composition of copper and zinc, though some brasses do include metals like tin or even iron. In the beginning of this video, I said I was cleaning my pennies with acetic acid and salt. I ended up leaving one of my pennies in solution for about a week, and when I came back, this is what was left. The penny had started corroding from the center out and this really shows the reactive power of an acid on a soft metal like zinc. I can easily push a hole through the center and see through the middle. Finally, a comparison of all my pennies, and we can see the newer ones are much shinier, and this is for a variety of reasons that I talked about before. Nevertheless, it is a really cool project, and almost anyone can do it. Also in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that there was a way to do this with sodium hydroxide instead of zinc chloride, and I just linked NerdRage's video in the description. I was going to do this project again, but it would have been the exact same thing you just saw, just in a different way. So I decided to call this one good and move on. With all of that being said, I want to take a moment to thank my Patreon subscribers, and you can see their names here. All the chemicals in this video were purchased with donations that were given by the Patreons, so this literally would not have been possible without you. Thank you so much. 
Finally, a list of all my videos I'm currently working on and or plan to do in the near future. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.